All right, guys. Uh, just a bit of a weekly update. How things are going. Um, first thing is working a weekend again. This is one of the things I've got at the minute. Uh, is I'm on the run to the sun. Uh, I'm basically putting my paperwork at the minute for the contracts I'm currently on. Uh, I might even pick up some extra work after this run. So I want to get back to Spain for a bit. Um, I've got a got a mate arriving in Spain on the 18th, so I'm going to meet up with him as well and try and get my work. That's what I'm doing the weekends, you see, because I can go back to Spain a bit early because uh, I still book the same amount of hours. But obviously, I book um, I book the same number of days. But obviously, I'm picking up Saturdays and Sundays over the next few weeks, so I can go early. Um, yeah, that's going well. And it, if any of you guys actually follow Real Deal, uh, Jay. Might be worth checking out his channel over the next few weeks um, ongoing because he's actually moved into one of my apartments over in Cebu. So you, you get a, get an idea of our setup in Cebu. Um, but also, I know he's going to cover a lot of stuff in the area, which is on my, literally on my doorstep or our doorstep since he's moved into one of the apartments over there. Um, yeah, so that'd be quite interesting. So if you if you follow Real Deal or don't, it's worth checking in there because you'll you'll be able to see our our um, set up in the Philippines. Because um, that's one of the things we do have quite a good setup there. Which, like I said before, is the kids' education is more important for me at the minute because um, we've got property in that, out in the Philippines, so we can go back to that any time. When it's rented out, we still got steady income streams off it, etc. So it's not, it's not as if um, I need to be there right now. Um, I really want to get a property set up in Spain uh, for the for kids' future, etc. So that you know, within the next two years, April and the kids will be Spanish. So I know some people have asked me about the Brexit. It won't affect me because. Um, April Spanish then, so I go and live with my wife, where at the moment she lives with me. Uh, so it's just the role reversal. Um, when am I going back to the Philippines? At the moment we're still doing uh, April's mother's paperwork, because we've had to get the birth certificate altered, um, which has been a bit of a pain. Um, then you've got to schedule the appointment for the passport, which is literally, I think it's four months to wait unless we go to Manila directly uh, which is another headache because obviously we live down in Cebu so it's it's not as straightforward as we would like but we're not in a rush I mean the thing is right now we're in quite a good position uh, financially I've been picking up money here in the UK um, the stuff we do in Spain is still continuing so a lot of the bills are covered in Spain directly um, the only thing is, I do find I spend a lot more during the school holidays because the, the kids have like kids club and just keeping them occupied um, is quite expensive. So um, yeah, so you do spend a fair bit more during the holidays. I'm trying to sort out a new vehicle in Spain at the moment. I'm, I'm in two minds whether to keep the, the Volkswagen van for the airport runs anyway because I can leave it out there, you know, at the end of the day, I I paid for the year, so taking the van and then using it for going back and forth to the airport, it's not a problem, uh, even if April gets another car, so, you know, I'll keep it, I'll see how it goes. I am also tempted to take a car from here to Spain, um, the reason being is, if a contract backwards and forwards, um, it's not an issue to drive. I mean, that, that's that's one thing I can say. You can drive to Spain. Um, although you go by ferry, you, you can get there. Um, I've worked out the fuel. It's £230. And you're talking around £100 for the ferry. So for £330, I can get the car over to Spain. Um, the reason I would think about it, and one of the reasons I'm pondering, is cars are cheaper in the UK. They're cheaper to buy, but more expensive to tax. So that that that's that's one of the things that's sort of putting a question mark. Do I need a Spanish car or a UK car? Because I find a lot of the cars in Spain aren't very well maintained. Um, look at the amount of repairs I've done on the the T4, the the Volkswagen. Um, and I look at a lot of the cars in the area; they've been bashed and not really well looked after. 
I don't really want to buy brand, uh, brand spanking new because obviously you'll lose about 3000 as soon as you drive it out off the forecourt. I, I can't justify wasting money like that. Um, so I'm sort of looking around at the moment vehicle wise to make a decision on that. Now the other side of that being if we've got a vehicle in Spain we can drive around more which means things like putting it on YouTube we're likely to recover the money that we invest in the car anyway. So uh, yeah, I'm still thinking about that one at the minute. See, in the UK, this contract, I go by train anyway. So I have sort of paused on the car here at the moment to see what else comes up because ideally I'm trying to get to a situation where I'm in Spain full time. Um, so I'm still still in the midair with that at the moment. There's been a couple of opportunities come up in Spain. Uh, taking a serious look at them when I go back. Gonna give, take a, take at least a month off work, have a look at them, try them, see if I can get them moving. If they start to develop, then that's me. I'm in Spain full time. And then there'll be a lot come off the back of that. Um, because now we've moved from the transition phase of trying to get to living in Spain in the sense of residency documents to now able to live and work there um, which means we're officially um, able to develop our life there. <laughs> uh, for me I need to develop more incomes externally rather than locally though uh, mainly because the income in the areas driven by tourism, tourism drives crap wages um, so unless we set up a business there, which at the moment there's a few locations I'm looking at, but at the same time, a lot of the rents are just crazy. Um, I don't, I don't even know where they get some of these figures from, but I'm still looking at it, still making a decision on it, but I'm not in a rush. You know, at the end of the day, uh, when you, you know, that, uh, apartment block that burned down. Um, there is a major push on compliance now. The, the thing is, I mean, I, I work in compliance, I work in asset management uh, to do with physical assets. Physical assets are everything from a light to a generator to fire doors uh, to analyzing fire protection systems, whatever you need. Uh, at the end of the day, anything to do with that, anything to do with buildings, I look at. Um, and it's become a major major uh, issue. The bizarre thing is, I know over the years, uh, I've highlighted things to companies and organizations about risks before, and they just ignore it going, you ain't got the money. That's it. Which is, okay, that's fine. And what I do, this is if you're in a similar industry, send it off as an email, and just put, as discussed, blah, blah, blah. Here's a, another copy of what we discussed. Um, I just want to make you aware that now I've told you those compliance risks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I am now making you responsible for that because now you're aware of it. There's no comeback on me because legally I'm not responsible for it, you see. I'm responsible at the moment I know. But as soon as you pass that to, uh, like, say, a health and safety officer or a uh, senior management, etc., you have to make a document for your own protection um, to pass the responsibility because you have no financial ability to make these decisions and I'll tell you now in facilities management people are very selective on what they remember um, if there was a disaster similar to what's happened I can guarantee they will say they never received reports they didn't they don't have the information nobody made them aware of it etc etc um, very, very common. And I know it's not, I shouldn't say it, it's not good for me to say this sort of stuff, but it's reality. It's reality. The, I've seen it more, more often than I should do. And I was discussing with a associate of mine, uh, cause we've been waiting for a disaster for the last seven years, a major one. Um, because of the me, there's a lot of incompetent people. They've replaced engineers with pen pushers. Now, I've got no problem with people pushing a pen, but at the end of the day, if they're not actually maintaining the stuff they should be, then they're actually a expensive risk because 
the money's better spent in people actually doing the work rather than somebody talking about doing it. Um, and the whole industry has been built like that. It, it all started, I think it was 1995, the regulations changed because you used to get the fire um, officer come around which was from the fire brigade and he would come and inspect your fire doors, your fire alarm system and stuff like that, make sure you're compliant and all this sort of stuff. Then they moved the responsibility from the local authorities and the fire brigades to you know, check that you're compliant to you're responsible for yourself. And a lot of these places have not been very responsible at all because what they do is they outsource it to facilities companies, etc. And facilities companies have got one thing they're after, profit margin. And every time a contract renews, they're going to do it at the, the cost of the last contract or look for a cost reduction. Um, the problem you get with that is the obvious. The original contract was costed maybe on uh, minutes. There's, there's, there's ways to do quotations. But the point is they were originally worked out on specifics. When the equipment was newer, when the, um, the place was better maintained, and you've got companies coming in going, we don't need 10 engineers, we only need five. We're going to replace this because we've got technology. This will make it more efficient, etc. And as the saying goes, you reap what you sow. Um, and this is why there's a big push on compliance now because at the end of the day a lot of these places aren't even aware if they're legally compliant anymore because they haven't been investing in it for a decade. Um, yeah, so yeah, my work's quite busy. Now, like I said, I don't knock it in the sense that, um, in the sense of the, the there shouldn't be a requirement. My, my frustration is the fact that a lot of people have got away with making a lot of money by not doing their jobs, which is making sure the buildings are safe, they're uh, efficient, they're reliable, and they've just gone bottom line and just said, well, it's not my problem because I'm only here for a year and then I'm going to move to a new contract. So not really first. They don't have the same sort of responsibility that I would like. I'm sure there is people that do have, well, I know there's people that are similar to myself that take our work seriously. It's not about me, it's about what we do, it's about what we achieve, it's about the outputs, it's about the safety, it's about the quality. Um, but you do find a lot of people are just like the politicians, just career orientated, um, screw everybody, self-serving and purely out for themselves. And it sickens me, it really does, because they sit there all pompous with their, oh, policy this, policy that. But they're not even running to their own policies. Um, and I, I, I'm not a fan of policies. They just have to have them. But the pomposity with it is just complete complete ignorance is bliss sometimes. Um, but hey-ho, that's work. Um, and I, like I said, I'm not trying to bash it in the bad way. I'm just saying it as it is. Um, but yeah, everything's OK. You know, things are starting to progress now. We, it, like I said, it's been a few delays, because, you know, because at the end of the day, this year has been quite hard at the start of the year, and as my wife said, um, at the start of this month, we're halfway through, let's hope the, the, the latter half is better than the first half. So I think that's where we are. We've gone through the hard bit, so I'm looking forward to enjoying the rest of this year. be good to get my mother-in-law over to Spain show her Spain, get to enjoy Spain and experience something she's never done before. Um, that I'll be honest with you, that takes priority for over me going to the Philippines because I can go to the Philippines anytime. Um, I just want to make sure my mother-in-law is happy. Same as I've got my, my daughter, my brothers and my father coming out to Spain as well. Um, we, we're just enjoying life. You know, that's, that's the thing, that, that takes precedence over everything. Being happy, that's, that's what matters. Um, so, yeah, big thumbs up for me for just enjoying it. I'm happy Jay's moved into one of my apartments and likes it. Um, I'm sure he's going to do some more videos on it, but I'll put a link above me somewhere so you can go and have a view of his channel and just keep an eye on it because what you'll find is you'll be doing a lot of videos in my area and then you'll get an idea why I like living there because... He's going to be able to update it because you've got to remember, I moved from the Philippines um, to Spain, well, to the UK and Spain 
before this YouTube stuff started to take off. So my video footage is not only old in the sense that the cameras were old equipment as well. Um, it also was not covering a lot in the Philippines because it wasn't there like a lot of the guys are now. Um, so jail probably cover most of this stuff for me while I'm there. Well, I'm not home, uh, but I'm looking forward to getting some business stuff moving soon as well out in the Philippines. Um, I'm also looking at some in Spain in the next couple of weeks. Well, not the next couple of weeks. After the next five weeks, next four weeks, then the month after that. Um, because obviously I'm going to have a couple of weeks off, spend some time with the wife, enjoy Spain a little bit. And then I'll be back to making some money. Um, but yeah, hope everyone's having a great summer. You know, in the day, it's, it's been it's been good here the last few weeks. The weather's been extremely hot. Um, can't complain. All right, guys, have a great day. Please like, please share, and please subscribe. Thank you.